Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, our forge is ready for its first run. We've got some little bits of um, priming up to do, setting up the gas for it, but basically we're ready to uh, have a little play. So let's look at how we're going to set this up. Um, it's been painted yesterday with the um, ceramic thermal enhancer, uh, which is kind of a paint. The wool is still soft. It is a paint rather than a solid coating. Uh, if you push your finger through it, it's just like going through the crust of a um, meringue. Let's say it's meringue. Um, but it has got this coating on now. And that's kind of dried off to the touch. And my intention is once it's up and running, just to keep it on a low heat for a little while, just to take out the rest of the moisture. But that's been there for 24 hours. Next thing is look at putting in the burner. So this is where the burner goes. You've got three nuts that can be wound off. These haven't got to be particularly tight when the whole thing's installed. They just centralize it really. Here's our burner. And that's got to go in. And that tells me you've got to, ooh, got to take these bolts almost all the way out just to get this trumpet in. And where you want this is so that the end of the burner is kind of flush with the inside wall of your um, insulation. You don't want it projecting too much into the actual unit. And the reason for that is um, this is offset, i.e. not going straight in towards the middle, and it's going to try to circulate the heat and throw it round and round and round the outside of your crucible. And if it's sticking out into the path of that circulating heat, it's going to get in the way. So I'm just going to lift that out and do a bit of viewing from this end for a moment. I'll give you a view of that in a second. So get a spanner on that. I'm guessing they're 13s. Yeah. So I just pinched all those. And let's put you in the furnace. There's the end of my trumpet. No euphemism intended. And you can see from this angle, it's out of the path. You've got a fire brick in the bottom and you can see this coat in it but if i press i could go through that so it is just a paint thick plastery type paint on top of the wall oops okay that's better so the next thing is we've got this spare bit of wool and uh, you can see the sort of consistency makes a crunchy noise. I think you could probably flatten it and stay flat. So I'm not going to squeeze it too much. And that little spare bit is to block up that hole there. Don't think it's an irritant, but still going to get myself some gloves. Obviously I'm popping these on because they're the right thing for the job, but never ever wear any form of rubber glove when you're working with anything hot because if that starts to melt, you ain't going to get it back off your hands. Uh, right, let's see what we can do in terms of getting this in here. Much grunting and groaning later, there's the end result. Next, it's the regulator. And we're going to rig this hose up onto it. Right, so, so there's my regulator all set up. And this one's set up for UK. So I've got that adapter and that screws into the uh, UK propane bottle. And then I'll be able to fit that on there. Always remember uh, left hand threads on most gas things. And in case you're not familiar, if you want to know if a, if a bolt or nut is left-handed, 
Um, let's see if we can get the focus to work. There we go. If you can see these notches on the flats, then that is the symbol to say this is left hand thread. Um, obviously not everybody makes good quality stuff, so it's not always a guarantee that if there's no notch it's right hand, but if it's notched it's left hand. No leaks there. So, good to go. <clears throat> so we've got some instructions. So we've hooked up the uh, gas pipe to down here. This little yellow valve, when it's at 90 degrees to the pipe, is shut. When you turn it, it's open. This little uh, choke, the wing nut is just to stop it from moving. You rotate it and it makes a gap. To start it up, you want it shut. The regulator is attached to the gas bottle using the UK adapter. And you want a very low pressure just to start with. But this is measured out in megapascals and 0.16 apparently is as high as you want to go. Now we're going to try and light it. Right, so um, a good idea for starting this, just to keep you out of the way, that's a, a weed burner. Just means you've got a really long lance and you're out of the way. And start thinking about getting some big heavy gloves. Shouldn't really need them for this stage, but get into the habit if you're going to be anywhere near that. Big gloves, not rubber. Foundry gloves are good. So this turn on and we've got a little igniter. Oh. We're away. So we've got a really hot flame there. What we're going to do, I'm going to turn on the gas and then just put this inside or vice versa. Let's do that. Ready? Okay, take the oars out. Has it gone out? No, it's still running. Lovely. <laughs> so that's what happens with absolutely no air on a really low pressure. And as soon as I open this a little bit, it introduces air into the system. You can hear the, the jet engine start up. And that's now pretty pretty unsafe to get near the, the top side of. So what I'm gonna do is turn it right down. Back to the yellow flame. Oh, have we gone out? He asks himself. Possibly. So turn that back off. Yeah, it's definitely gone out. <laughs> okay, you wanna watch it don't catch you in case there's some gas in there. It's heavy gas, so it will sit in the bottom. Ready? Yeah, we're on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use my tongs. <laughs> to close the lid. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of air. And we're just going to let this warm up.
and she's away. How to adjust your air choke for the ideal flame. Open the air choke, choke about 8 mil. The correct flame should be a bit blue. Dark blue flame is correct, which means is incorrect, which is too much air. A bit more. See, as soon as I touch that, it changes it. that for a short while right the exhaust ooh, is currently about 135 degrees and that's a few seconds into starting it up the body of the furnace is at 53 lid 81 shoot down the mouth flickering around rather too much to do because I'm not touching anything in particular but it says 500 degrees and I can just about start to see the ceramic glowing inside so I think what I'll do now is I'll turn it off again or down to the yellow flame and just let it ease yellow let's just see what's going on You can see the change in colour on my ceramic paint. <laughs> and with the lid open, let's just have a little play to see the flames. Well, you can see the flames rotate then. That was quite good. Because it's going straight up, you've got to be careful. You can't see it. But... And again, we just used an optical pyrometer, and all it says is high, which means well over 800. <laughs> yep. So, what I've sussed out is to put it in, I've got to go to the other side of it. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise I'm hitting the edge. Yeah. in the middle there we go right let's warm up the crucible crucible that look okay yeah and this should make it go right round around it, around it. Yeah. and it goes after burner after gently heat cycling the crucible a few times uh, we're ready to start putting things in it to melt uh, but that is a story for another time tune in again soon for more adventures on to the garage <laughs>